Welcome to the Antique Showcase with your host, Holly Nawara. Join Holly now as she shows what's hot and what's not in antiques and collectibles. Sierra Car Service has been in business since 1978 as a full-service auto repair garage. For minor maintenance like oil changes, fluid checks, engine diagnostics and tune-ups, to more advanced repair like full engine rebuilds, clutch work and brakes, Sierra Car Service does it all. They guarantee their work and they put your safety first. They are located at 1535 Highmore Avenue and they are open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. Make an appointment today to keep your car running strong. I know you've heard this before, I will stand on my head, I'll kick my dog's spot to sell you used appliances today. You can drop off your old stuff here when you purchase a new item from us. Call us at 775-682-1994 ask us about service and parts. Come on down to more stuff, we got new appliances, we got used appliances, we will make you a deal today. Go see Tony, go see Tony, go see Tony, woohoo! At Technology Center, you'll find everything the big box stores have. A large showroom full of electronics, computers, monitors, keyboards, and all the accessories for your home and office needs. Technology Center now has two locations. You don't have to leave the area to get satisfaction. At Technology Center, we know computers. Johnny Gunn spent years on the LAPD as a well-respected intelligent cop. When an internal affairs investigation involving a close friend causes him to give up his shield, he spends the next five years as a struggling private investigator. When a case falls across his desk, Johnny follows clue after clue that links not only his former police colleagues, but has ties to past murders, a cover-up involving a state senator, and a large drug cartel that wants him dead. Follow the adventures of Johnny Gunn from Trinity Heart Media. Hey everybody, welcome to Vuk's Place. This is my booth in the Virginia Street Antique Mall. I shared this with my partner, Tracy. And uh, just a little background information, we called it Vuk's Place. She lost her father a couple of years ago and uh, his nickname was Vuk. So in honor of him, we named it Vuk's Place. So this is it. This is where some of my stuff ends up. Um, so this is a piece that I actually got on an online auction at Lightning Auctions here in town. They only do online auctions, which is too bad because I'd really like, I like the feel of a live auction. Um, it really gets your adrenaline going and um, uh, it's a little bit more exciting, but uh, Lightning is a great place to also get things. They have really high quality merchandise and we've gotten some really cool things there. So this piece here, um, we end up with a lot of artwork and uh, we don't know anything about it. So we have artwork under our bed, behind the doors, in the closets. And this is a piece that I was actually very attracted to because of um, just the look of it. It's Egyptian. It's actually an etching from 1905 of uh, the Temple of Isis uh, on the island of Philae in Egypt. This um, location actually doesn't exist any longer. Um, at, in 1960, they had to move this entire temple complex uh, out of the Nile River um, to another location because when they built the Aswan Dam, uh, it flooded. So this whole temple complex was flooded underwater and in order to protect it, they ended up moving it in between 1960 and 1980. Anyway, so this piece um, shows it in its original location right towards the end of the Victorian period, which was um, super focused on Egypt. Um, Egyptology became very, very popular um, during the Victorian period. So uh, somebody may have gone on their uh, trip to Egypt and etched this view of the Temple of Isis on the island of Philae and brought that back. Over here in the right-hand corner, it does say that it's distributed by um, a company or a museum in Berlin. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool too. So who knows, this could be my retirement. 
Um, it could uh, be worth millions and millions of dollars. Let's certainly hope so. But I really liked it. So until I find out what its true value is, it won't be coming into the shop. It'll be at my house, on my wall, in my room. <laughs> For over 100 years, Northern Nevadans have slept in comfort with the help of Reno Mattress Company. Hi, I'm Mike Berry. Can you flip your mattress? If not, let us custom make your next mattress. We offer Talalay latex rubber, memory foam mattresses, foam rubber cut to size, water beds and accessories, electrical adjustable beds and more. Plus, we specialize in custom sizes for your home or RV. Reno Mattress Company has been the place to shop since 1910. Come visit our showroom at 1210 East 4th Street. And remember, if you sleep on it, we can make it. Data West Magazine premieres March 1st, 2016. Formerly the In Reno Magazine is now being distributed throughout the five western states with a new name and size. Nevada West Magazine will now be the more popular format of 8.5 by 11. Get your copy now from one of our friendly distributors. Retailers and other businesses can now advertise to a greater audience than ever before. Please contact our office and place your ad today. Um, here's an interesting piece. This is a glass vintage urinal <laughs> I purchased it for twenty dollars it books as high as a hundred dollars uh, it's very rare uh, uh, there's no flaws no chips uh, and here's another one that I purchased that same night it's a twenty dollar urinal <laughs> Um, they actually used these uh, 50, 70 years ago, uh, just like this. Let me, I was going to get to this one. This is a chamber pot. It's very old. It's, it's hand-painted roses. Um, it's really a nice piece. Now, uh, I, I bought this at Sammy's, I think, for, I know it was under, it was for $15. Well, this books, this is another good find. It books for usually for over a hundred. Um, here's the rose. I estimate 50 to 70 years old. Uh, not a scratch on it. And what makes it interesting on the bottom, it says, uh, I got it upside down. It says, Merry Christmas. It says, To Dad, Merry Christmas, Love Pat. Okay, maybe she made it back then for her. I don't know. Uh, but it's I've, there's similar ones that are very close for going for up to $150. And it's got a handle. And it's in it's good shape. Some people use them for flowers, uh, decorations on their dining room table. You know, it's just an unusual piece. It's a chamber pot. Okay, why did I buy them? Make a buck. It's so cheap, I couldn't resist it. All right, so as you can see, I have Barbara. She belongs to me. I was a little bit sneaky about what I did um, because I wanted this so badly for myself that I hid her in the stack of other playbills hoping that no one else was as big a Barbara freak as I am. And so um, I ended up bidding on it. I got the whole stack for very cheap and so now I have this collectible and I am so excited because um, I love Barbara. So um, I did end up with a couple of other playbills that turned out to be worth some decent money. Um, they run about $10 a piece. You get into big money when obviously they're signed by members of the cast, but just a regular playbill, depending on which play it's from, um, sells for about $10 a piece. These probably won't come into the shop here. I'll probably put these on eBay. Um, someone from back east, a big Broadway fanatic, um, actor in LA or New York, uh, Chicago uh, might be interested in some of the other playbills that I have and so uh, this will probably end up on uh, eBay but this is going into my own Barbara Temple yeah when this went up lot 163 with the John Deere uh, table lamp uh, which I think is just so cool I just had to have it this one just fit right in you know it's about 16 inches high and and Look at all the details. Look at the John Deere parked in front of that, that barn. Oh my God, you know, uh, I go, I gotta have this. A lot of people probably don't realize that they change the patterns every year. This is a 1999, very collectible lamp. 
Uh, I can get 65 for it, I know it. Uh, somewhere between 50, 50 and 65. They sell new ones, brand new ones that look kind of the same. Uh, they have the tractor and everything on Amazon for $39 plus shipping. So I go, this is collectible, but $19.99 and uh, I can sell this within a month. So anyhow, uh, here it goes, it comes up and all of a sudden I see all these play cards in front of me go up and I'm going, whoa, and I put mine up. And, and uh, it just went back and forth and there was Holly, you know, she's always dogging me on tractors. <laughs> and uh, 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 I just, God, I couldn't believe it. Anyhow, I want it, I got it for $37.50, but I paid too much and uh, it was just, I'll, I'll double my money, no problem. Uh, and this is just such a good piece. 1999 John Deere, licensed, what the heck. And what kind of tool did you say this was? I think it's an old uh, Ford, I'm not sure. Yeah. It's just an old automobile or an old uh, farm tool. Uh-huh. I had two of them down in the box. Yeah, no, you've got another one down there that's yeah, straight. The reason I picked that one up was because of that 25, 30 seconds. That's interesting. It, uh, it's five, right? Yeah. 20, yeah. 25, 30 seconds. Very cool. And I'm really... I wouldn't familiar with that. Right. Well, and I like—I just like the shape. I mean, you could just yep. hang that up on your wall just as decoration. Sure you could. You know, just with the shape in your in your garage or you know on your wall or whatever. I I, I love that. That's fantastic. Key words. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> well, and hot August nights is coming up, so I, oh, I do think. I um, yeah. Oh, no. Rodeo. Oh, that was passed already. And Hot August Nights is here somewhere. Maybe I bought Christmas and Hot August Nights. Yeah. Well, the other thing that what what was your name again? Bob Craig. Bob. I'm Holly. You got your yo-yo oh. yo-yo string on there. there you go. Well, the other thing that's very cool that I think is very prevalent for Hot August Nights are the yo-yos. Can yeah. you tell me a little bit about yo-yos? How did you get into collecting yo-yos? I started saving them when uh, I couldn't find the Duncans anymore in the uh, yard sales and. The flea markets. Uh -huh. The old Duncans seemed to be just disappearing, so I started collecting them about 10, 15 years back. Uh -huh. And I've been saving them. And well, you've got some uh, older Mexicans. wood, right? Some wood ones, the Duncan. And are you uh, quite the yo yo trickster yourself, or no? I can do the basics. Right? You can make it go up and down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can you walk the dog? Yeah, but not on this. Uh huh. It's on this mark. Yeah, this. yeah. But yeah, the basics I can do. And so with a Duncan Yo-Yo, are there certain uh, models of the Duncan that are more um, butterfly. collectible? The Butterfly, right? The I butterfly, remember the Butterfly. The special, the Neos. It, there was one that used to light up too, wasn't yep. there? There's a, the Glow. These are, these glow. Uh-huh. Yeah. But the light ups are the newer ones that came out later on. Uh-huh. Uh, but there are some of those in one of the boxes that I brought with us. And the, but the Neo, the, the neon glow ones, those are the ones that, that we had back then. You know, we were referring to it on time. Right. And so I also see here that, um, here, let me, let me give that back to you. I see here that you've got some marbles. Can you tell me a little bit about marbles? Well, I find it very difficult to um, figure out what's a good marble and what's just an average marble. Okay, the, the key to marbles is whether it's pre-1971 or pre-1970. Okay, and That's, how do you know that? Well, the only way that I actually would know for sure on most of them is I compare them to a bag that I know is older than that by many years. Okay. This is a Marble King bag. Uh -huh. and this was in the 60s. Okay. Most likely into the 60s. Uh -huh. Now, if I have a group of these here, and I look in there and I say, oh, those are the medium small shooters. Right. They're a little bigger than the regular marble. Uh -huh. We would shoot with these, but getting to the bigger ones are over there like these. Uh -huh. Now, a Marble King is the company that is now back in existence, believe it or not, in West Virginia. Uh -huh. They went out of business many moons ago. Now, some of these like this would, I'm not going to swear that's a Marble King, but, but it just right, just certainly comparing looks that. like it, doesn't mm -hmm. it? And then there's bags of these around that tell you which company made them. Oh, wow. I've yeah. never seen them at, still in the bag. Okay, well, now this is a Mr. Peanuts. Uh-huh. That's a bag of Mr. Peanuts from the 50s and 60s. Yep. And this is from a country called Astro, and they're made in the USA, and it'll be West Virginia or Pennsylvania or Ohio. And these, are these also marbles? These look like they're made yes, out of clay or wood clay. or something. Clay. They're called clay E's, clay E's. Uh-huh. And they were made back after rocks. 
after you made it out of real rocks, they went to clay. Uh huh. So how old would you say those marbles are? These were probably made in the early 1900s. Wow. Where did you find those? I bought most of these at yard sales, and then when I started running low on them, I went to the internet. Uh huh. And I search and I, I try to find them that way on the internet. And wow. I have, I have little jars of them that only have like six or eight of them. Uh huh. And occasionally you'll see what's called a Bennington. Now, a Bennington is where it, it was a clay that got a special glaze. Oh, wow. Right. And a Look last at that. Firing. That's very pretty. See what I'm saying? Uh huh. And around over on the other side, in that other marble display, there's some bigger ones of these Benningtons. And they show the little eyes where they sit beside their partners uh -huh. when they fired them that last time. And so are you finding that these old vintage games are coming back in style? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But, well, a lot of the older people, or middle-aged people like us, they, they still enjoy them. Right. And they're trying to get their kids and grandkids into them. Right, to get away from the TV and their iPad and actually interact with a game, right? You said that. I. <laughs> I didn't say that, did I? I have no, I'm one, just kidding you. One more question for you. These small uh, pool balls. They're real balls, pool balls. But why are they so much smaller, the well, size because here? Because of the size of the pool table. These are real pool balls. Uh-huh. Here's the cue ball. Right. One through 15 is a set for a small pool table in, a, in your den or wherever. Uh-huh. And then these are some extras that I've accumulated over the years. Uh-huh. And having a whole complete set of them, that's a little bit rare in itself. And are these tiddlywinks? No, those are buttons. Oh, just straight buttons? Just straight buttons. Uh-huh. We, we just took jars and downsized them. Right. Mixed them up. And uh, with buttons, are, is there something in particular that, that... Old ones. Old ones. The older ones. These are new ones. Right. How but, can you tell it's an older button? Well, you either got to know it, uh -huh. or you got to have one of those ladies around here that's experts come by and tell me. The lady expert? Why don't you come on over here, lady expert? <laughs> oh, not that one. Oh, not, that one. Oh, not you? You're <laughs> oh, not the lady has, button expert? Kathy, no, Kathy is, she knows more about the buttons than I do, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, but the bags of buttons, the, they like to go through them over at Alameda at the antiques there over there. Uh -huh. And there's a couple of different ladies that come around and teach me a little bit about them. Yeah. Now, here's another couple of small different bags of them. Now, these are the old vegetable buttons that were made. Vegetable ivory is what they're called. You leave them out in the hot sun, they melt. Uh-huh. And they get moisture in them. Oh, wow. They're called the old, they're old. Uh-huh. And there are people who collect these. Right. And... What, what I have done is, over the years, same as with the marbles, uh -huh. you find a big old jar of them. Right, and just start comparing. Uh -huh. And you save them, and then later on you learn where they are and right. where they belong. Well, and it about. keeps your, your mind going, it keeps your interest going, it keeps you on that hunt, you know, and yep. continuing, right, yep. to learn yep. more and more. Yep. That's what I love about this business. Is it's, a, it's, it's a learning experience every day for both the dealer and the collector. And the kids. Right? Yeah, the young kids and the old kids. <laughs> Very good, Bob. Thank you. It was nice to meet Thanks you. So much. You take right care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Right on. We'll see you in just a minute. Imagine having a dog that responds to every command, one that comes when called, calmly greets you and your guests at the door, and is a joy to be around. Well, now you can. Sit Means Sit Dog Training of Reno has been providing customers with quality dog training services for over 10 years. Let our staff of certified professional trainers use the latest and greatest scientific methods to get the best out of your dog. From potty training puppies to solving the most demanding behavioral problems, Sit Means Sit is the answer. Call now for your free consultation. Are you working your computer or is it working you? Donate your old equipment and get a new to you computer. Save money while helping your community. Proceeds go directly to disability resources to help individuals in our community with disabilities have a better quality of life. Give, get, and save at New to You Computers, 50 East Greg Street, corner of Greg and McCarran and Sparks. Call 329-1126 or find us on Facebook at New to You Computers or Disability Resources Incorporated. Okay, now I'm on 61, a vintage table fan, right down there. There it is, 20, 20, now 5. How about a 5? Anybody get 5? 5, anybody get 5? Anybody get 5? Anybody get 5? 5, here now, 30. 30 here now, 5. 35. How about a 35? Anybody get 35 at the bottom? Anybody get 35? Nice color. 30 now, 35. Oh, you did? She's 25. I need to be 30. Anybody get 30? You're all right at 25 still? And now 30. How about a 30, 30, 30, anybody get 30, anybody get 30, anybody get 30 dollars, anybody get 30 dollars? Sold here at 25 dollars, fire number 316. 
So this is the fan that I won at the auction down in Sacramento and it's very cool. The color is awesome. The style is awesome and it's the perfect example of what not to do. So I did not preview this fan. I saw it just before it went up on the auctioning block and um, I instantly fell in love with it because it's the style um, time period that I'm, I'm really in love with. And so I let my heart get ahead of my head and I bid on it without looking at it first. So when I got it home, all excited about plugging it in and seeing how I was gonna, you know, uh, price my fan, I was probably gonna price this around 50, maybe $55. Um, I paid 25 for it, so I was gonna double my money, which is pretty decent. I discovered two things. One, it's broken right here. So uh, the um, caging is pulled apart here at this um, brace point. Not a super big deal, but if you're a perfectionist like me, that would bug you. And two, it's broken right here. So I went to go plug it in and I was feeling the cord, making sure that it wasn't broken at any place. And I discovered that, um, oh, actually it's on this side. Way up in here, the wire is exposed. So pretty big fire hazard, not a good idea, could electrocute yourself. Self. So um, now what I have to do is something that um, I don't mind doing, but it drives my partner a little bit crazy, which is I have to fix this. So um, I'm not a big electrician. Sometimes I get my dad to do stuff for me, but he's a huge procrastinator. So it could be, you know, 2020 by the time I get this fan back and who knows what's in style then. It's because I like tools. I'm a tool fanatic. Uh -huh. And yep. um, I love this pick right here. You've this is gorgeous. Southern Pacific Company uh, miner's pick. Oh, it's a, it could be a miner's pick. So how do you know it's Southern well, Pacific it's, Company? Well, it says right here, Southern Pacific, SP and Company. Wow. Sometimes it'll say SPPC, but the older ones say SP and Company. So how old do you think this pick is? It's probably from the 30s or 40s. It uh -huh. could be. It could be. Yeah. Um, and uh, these are like coal shovels. Right. Oh, I always think of these could as um, horse poop shovels. They could be. A dual <laughs> purpose. You could use them for anything you want. Very cool, though. So, um... Do you find that tools are kind of a hot item, or do they well, wax and I wane? Like tools. And, uh, yeah, you know, they're still practical, and right? They're usable, and, uh -huh. and they're just they have a certain uh, character of their own, right? You know? Right. Well, then they just don't make them like they used to, they right? Don't. I mean, they don't. I they I was, make them a lot lighter. That's well, that's true. Right, real metal and real, real sturdy, heavy wood. Absolutely. You know, I was using a tool the other day, and the head of it fell off, and the stem of it broke, and I was like, "This is a piece of this one junk." Could, uh, you know, used for another twenty or thirty years. At least, right? Yeah. Well, and I think a lot of people too um, decorate with these things, right, out in Absolutely. their gardens and sure. things like this, sure. or. Uh, um, use. I have actually a, a pick in the front of my house with a little uh, miner's pan, there and that's go. my that's yeah, my that's decoration at the front the of my house. So, yeah. So um, you've got some pretty pottery back here as well. Oh, I like this Brickle. here. A friend of mine brought these by and try to see if he's already sold some pieces. And uh huh. And what's the year on these? You know, I'm telling you, uh, I'm really not too sure about uh, when uh, they they were. When they were made. They really kind of look 40s, right, just by the color and the design. They and are they marked on the bottom? How do you tell you know who the are. maker is? They are right there. Uh huh. There are marks on it, and uh, it's uh, they're sort of they're signed. Uh huh. And uh, I'm not really the the Van Brickle guy, but a friend of mine did drop these off to see what I could do with them. Nice. And, uh, and maps, too, I think, are also highly collectible, right? Very, especially maps of Nevada. Uh-huh. And um, any map of Nevada, any year, or does it tend to be more well, from the when we're territory? Right. But uh, the old mining maps, uh, topographical maps are popular, railroad maps. Right, I mean, right. Maps. Right, yeah. Yeah, Very you didn't popular. have your Google map, right? You had to actually take a map oh, yeah. out. Absolutely. Do you still know how to read a map? Absolutely. I used to collect them as a kid. I'd walk around my whole city collecting maps. Right. Very I cool. I wish I still had them. Yeah, right? 
maps are very collectible. Cool. Especially so the other ones. The, and do you find um, with the maps, how would do you have an idea of the best way to preserve maps if those to are frame it, to like frame it? Like any paper, like uh -huh. any paper collectible, you know, you have to get it framed and keep it all out of the sun, you know. Right, because the, the paper will covered. tend to get brittle and well, just fall it apart, fades, right? They fade and stuff. Yeah, because I've had some old road maps. They're yeah. folded up. Um, yeah. I've sold them at my shop. Some of them for a pretty decent price, um, but uh, when you start to unfold them, they start to well, you fall apart. dry mount it on the yeah. foam core or something and, and frame them, but framing is the best way to preserve them. Yeah. Uh, okay. Get them out of the box and right. show Up them on off. Right, up on the wall, oh, right? Yeah. Show them off. Very cool. All right, Mitch, thank you so much for talking with well, us today. Well, thanks for stopping. Yeah, we'll see you around. Now see you around something. town. Yeah. Now buy something. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll okay. be back for this sign. Maybe. I'll give you a good, less than a dollar a mile. I'll okay. give you a good price. Sounds good. All right, Mitch. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. In support of Earth Day, don't throw all of your old electronics away. Let new-to-you computers dispose of them properly. Free Community E-Waste Collection Event, Saturday, April 16th from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m., 6100 Neal Road, next to NV Energy. Disposal of the electronics are free. Items that will not be accepted are CRT TVs and monitors, refrigerators, car parts, batteries, kitchen appliances, air conditioners, or medical equipment. To volunteer, please register at www.newtoyoucomputers.org. We know what you want. You want quality custom embroidery and branding from a local, family-owned company that can get the job done at a good price. That's what you'll find at Miller's Jackets and Jose & Associates. For more than 26 years, we have been the go-to local silk screening and embroidery expert. Clothing, caps, pens, banners, and small signs are our specialty. And at Jose & Associates, there's a sale every day, exactly what you would expect from a locally-owned, family-operated business. We're located at 950 Glendale Avenue in Sparks. Come on in and realize the difference a local company can make. Wow, what kind of mascara are you using? I'm not wearing any. I have eyelash extensions on from the eyelash connection. Eyelash extensions? They're semi-permanent lash extensions applied like hair extensions. They take a single lash and adhere it to your own, giving you a full set of lashes. Your original lashes aren't damaged because they use single lashes, not flares. Plus, Eyelash Connection also offers beauty treatments like microdermabrasion, Brazilian waxing, facials, and more. Hey, where are you going? To the Eyelash Connection. 